talking about peace and wanted to go a little bit farther and look a little bit deeper into the scripture that we've been talking about, and that's in Philippians, the fourth chapter. When we look at verse uh, six, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, some of the translations that are out there give uh, a depth of view that your heart and your mind will be guarded by the peace of God. And it implies even like a garrison. Garrison is a descriptive militaristic uh, description of many soldiers, if you will. And that really is the power of God's peace guarding and keeping your heart and mind. It's like a, a force that is unstoppable when we really, really tap into it. And the way we tap into it, the first verse that I read there is that we choose not to be anxious, not to be stressed out, not to be overcome with pressure, uh, but in everything, rather, by prayer and our supplication unto God, we, along with those prayers and supplication, we offer thanksgiving unto him. Thanksgiving always acknowledges that God is greater, and his greater power will see us through time and time again. When we acknowledge that, what it does, it takes all the pressure off us and performance, a performance mentality is really a works mentality, it will bring us into bondage over and over and over again. But when we put it on God by thanking him and declaring how great he is and how awesome he is and that heart of gratitude, what is Thanksgiving? It's gratitude for who God is, one, and then what he's already done. Well, he's done it all for us. So we need to be general in everything that he's done for everyone in the entire human race. Salvation has been purchased for us. Nothing else could earn or no one else could earn the great debt and price that salvation was for us, but he did it. But then we also need to get very specific. We need to acknowledge the times that he has blessed us personally, the great victories that he's wrought on our personal behalf because of that great salvation that he's purchased for us and the whole world generally. When we get specific, it reminds ourselves of those landmarks of great testimonies and victories that he has done on our behalf. And what that does is that, again, focuses us, like we talked about in last session, it's part of that meditation process, the right type of meditating, meditating on him, his goodness, his grandness, his infinite power and strength and love for us. And what that does is that sets us up to have a state of his perfect peace that's beyond all comprehension. Do you know when we begin to tap into these things, what it does is it takes us from a place of just having peace for ourselves to where that peace can permeate our entire being and then from us be propelled out to all those that we would encounter around us. A dear friend and mentor had a really, really cool encounter where that peace not only was his, but it was propelled in a very unique circumstance and actually affected the fate of a nation. That friend was Jerry O'Dell, and he shared with me personally the time that he had led with a group of believers into an African nation called Swaziland. And it happened to be at a time that all of a sudden there was high, high tensions between different groupings, uh, different people groups, if you will, in that nation. And that all came to a head and they were asked, he was asked to come and share before parliament because basically Swaziland was on the brink of civil war. And in that moment, he tapped into the peace of God in his own natural ability it was like, what am I going to share that's going to make a difference? I mean, these people groups, I'm from you know the other side of, of the world, and I don't know the ins and outs of everything that they believe and everything that came about to bring them to this climactic point that they're right there, ready to go to war with each other. 
But in the midst of it, he reached out to God. And no matter how intense your situation is, no matter how crazy or hopeless it might look, God is there to manifest the answer, not only to you, but through you, because he cares about humanity. He cares about the world. And so in that moment, Brother Jerry O'Dell reached down deep inside and God gave him the 23rd Psalm. Share about, the Lord just revealed to him, how I want to be the shepherd in this moment, not just individually to members of parliament. I want to be the shepherd to their entire nation. And he got up and began to share from the 23rd Psalm about how God is the good shepherd and that Jesus was there on behalf of all of Swaziland to shepherd them through this conflict, this disagreement that had them right on the fringe of going into all out battle with each other. No doubt it would have been a, a bloody costly civil war like so many nations have seen. And in the moment of him sharing these things, he noticed one group of people right over here would not look at him They'd look away and he thought, oh my goodness, they must disagree with what I'm sharing. They must be part of the group that want to just go out into all out war and aren't receiving my words. But just to the contrary, because after he shared and he sat down, they came up to him and the main leader of that group said, we, the whole time you were speaking, it was hard for us to look at you because everything that you said was preceded by this light that shone so brightly from your face that it was it was hard to even gaze or look at you. And the leader said, this was a sign to us. We had decided, no matter what anyone said, we were going to go into full-fledged war because we so disagreed. But this encounter showed us that you were speaking the words of God, and we knew we had no choice but to yield. So we are here ready to make peace. God wants to manifest through our lives in such a manner that whether it's our workplace, our homes, our neighborhoods, our community, our cities, or in, in some rare cases, even our nations, he'll position us with a sphere of influence and a setup to favorably manifest his peace. He wants us to project his peace into any and every situation that may arise because God is the God of peace. He is the good shepherd that wants to shepherd men's souls into the fullness of his goodness and his benefits, his peace and his love and his giftings that he has for each and every human being. But he also wants to be the good shepherd in the national affairs of the countries that we belong to. And if we will yield to him and listen to him in those moments, he will give us words that not only will change our communities, but in some instances will give us that platform that we can even speak and it change our nations. We need to be ever attentive in moments like this that we get the words of God Paul knew this all so well. If anyone went through turmoil, it would have been the Apostle Paul. He's the one that wrote here this letter to the church in Macedonia, the church at Philippi. And he said this at the end of saying, finally, brethren, what, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He goes on to take it one notch farther. He said, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Paul had every right to be able to speak by the Spirit of God in this way, because if anyone had seen turmoil, if anyone had seen chaos, if anyone had seen heartbreak and difficulty, it was Paul. You read over in Corinthians when he talks about and defends his apostleship, he talks about being 
beaten with 39 stripes five times and then beaten with rods another three times, being stoned. He was literally stoned to death and then God raised him up as believers surrounded him and sang praises and prayers unto the Lord. God supernaturally raised him up. He was lost in the deep, in the sea, a night and a day. I mean, it was crazy the things that Paul encountered that were just unreal. And yet in it all, he knew the peace of God that passes all understanding. So he wasn't speaking just out of theoretical uh, accolades or theoretical knowledge. He was speaking out of experience when he said, the things which you learned of me, received of me, heard of me, and saw in me. See, they not only heard, saw, demonstrated, they saw in his own body. He carried the marks and the scars of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was persecuted to the point of death and raised back up to carry the gospel. The very stripes Jesus had, 39, he had five different times. And yet with all that, he exemplified a man that walked in tune with heaven, filled with the fullness of God, filled with the peace and manifested presence of God. We can walk in the same way when we tap into by focusing in on these things in the very ways that I've shared in this series. You can have God's peace that passes all understanding and you are called to manifest it into the world that is so desperately in need, even the very ones that might have persecuted you, might have mocked or ridiculed you, they're hoping that you'll prove it out to the final degree, the final decree where they reach a point of saying, man, this is beyond my mind, but what you have is real and I want it. They're wanting you to prove the risen Jesus is truly Lord on their behalf. And when you will stand strong in that and manifest that peace, you'll be able to introduce them to the Prince of Peace. It'll change their lives. It'll change your community. It'll change our nations. It'll change the world. Let's lock arms in that bond of peace and bring the Prince of Peace to a hurting, broken, turmoil-ridden world so that they can have peace that passes all understanding. We trust that you've enjoyed this time that we've had together, that you've been inspired and encouraged, and that you've seen a deeper way to go farther in the destiny design that God has on your life. If you've enjoyed, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, like it, share it with a friend, and we'll see you next time.